All right, everybody, and after a long day of Pokemon, we have finally reached a grand finals. Nelson versus Kenny. Let's a, a matchup we're not unfamiliar with, really. Well, uh, they are fighting now for their 40 uh, CP and being, f uh, of course, first place in the third Omega Series uh, PC here in Singapore. The last prayer challenge was exactly the same matchup. Kenny versus Nelson at that time. Kenny was able to close out the game to set 2-0 after some unfortunate rolls on Nelson's side. Uh, Nelson has to be back for revenge this time. Yeah. Well, let's see whether Kenny can defend his title as a previous cha as a champion. And see whether Nelson can take uh, or, or Nelson can take his spot from this rematch that we have here. We see that both players are actually using very similar teams to what they've used uh, in the previous premier challenge. So having played against each other so so often with the similar teams, they have to, you know, be pretty familiar with each other's playstyles and, and, and quirks. So I expect to see some really high level prediction plays going into this match. As you see Kenny's team on the top screen. Amoongus, Conkelder, Cresselia, Heatran, Kangaskhan, Sylveon, and on the bottom screen, Nelson's team of Terrakion, Kangaskhan, Gengar, Heatran, Zapdos, and Clefable. Yeah, both teams that we have seen uh, at least a few times uh, today on stream, uh, with uh, Kenny in the quarterfinals, was it? And uh, Nelson in the semifinals. So we have seen what uh, we have kind of seen at least a bit of what these two teams can do, and it will be an interesting match uh, how Nelson and Kenny. Uh, is able to deal with uh, each other's tricks. It's really, it's really funny, funny because it, you look at both players' teams, and Kenny's team is basically like a slower, bulkier version of Nelson's team. He has the Cressida to set up Trick Room. He has the Redirection, which Nelson also has with the Clefable. Uh, he has the support Pokemon with Gengar and, and Cresselia. He has the Heatran. He has the Fighting type in Kelda versus the Terrakion. And of course, the Kangaskhan Mirror. So it well, might be a battle of speed this time. So uh, whether Chick Room will go up on Kenny's side or whether will Nelson be able to play around it or stop it entirely altogether. So we, we see Nelson is gonna lead with his get his favorite Gengar Kangaskhan lead as Amoongus Cresselia coming out for Kenny. Well we haven't seen uh, we haven't seen Kangaskhan using fake out and also I don't think it would be so he might not be carrying it, so I don't think he will be using it here. So Gengar may want to taunt either one of Mugus or Cresselia, maybe stopping uh, from them from sporing or setting up Chick Room. It's a very tricky position here for, for Nelson, actually. He has to call the first thing correctly. Is Amoongus going to go for the Rage Powder, or is it going to go for the Spore? If it goes for the Spore, then, you know, the, the taunt onto Amoongus is definitely the, the best play here. However, if Nelson chooses to... Uh, double target into the Cresselia while trying to take out the Trick Room and Kenny goes for the Rage Powder, then Kenny's gonna survive that double target and Cresselia will, will set up the Trick Room and possibly even get in a Trick Room Sweeper in for free in turn 2. If Amogus, yeah, if Amogus does stay in distance, it may not be a bad thing for Kenny altogether, especially if Trick Room comes out. So he doesn't have to risk switching out and then his Pokemon can just come in and as you said, uh, switch in for free and then we'll start uh, uh, hit, hitting fast from there on. So both players taking the attack. Oh, the decision has been made, so let's see what happens. As Nelson's gonna go straight for the Mega Evolution here, baby out of the pouch. Probably gonna go straight for either the fit. We haven't seen that as is, is Gengar goes for the protect actually. As power up punch does come out from the Kangaskhan into the Cresselia, gonna raise his attack to double its stage. I haven't mentioned Cresselia going trick room uh, trick room here. And yep, Cressella does going slower than Mungus, so Chigu will be out and then Spore successfully going into Kanga's gun. But Kanye does re read that, that Protect there and gets the Trick Room up. Now with Gengar having burned his Protect, once again you find that you know Kenny's in a position to Spore the Gengar, or whatever is in the Gengar slot, and get off some free damage onto this Mega, onto this mega Kanga's gun, which is sitting pretty threatening at plus 2 attack. Yes, I mean, Kenny is in a good position, however, neither of his Pokemon can really deal damage very, uh, very hard deal much damage. So Kenny has uh, may have a decision to switch on his Cresselia for a more offensive Pokemon to make use of this trick room. Like maybe maybe conquer them to get rid of uh, Kangaskhan easier. Or he or maybe his own uh, Kangaskhan. Kenny needs to needs to evaluate his uh, you know his momentum though. He only has four turns of trick room and uh, you know, is he gonna get more damage off in the in the in the three remaining turns with his Cresselia, 
or is he is it is it better to actually switch out? That's something, he, and maybe save Priscilla late on in the game to maybe set up trick room again. Is something he has to really consider here. We see that Nelson has actually locked in his moves. Kenny is considering his position. He has a, a lot of options right, right now. He has a lot of options, but he has to decide which one is the correct one. So he does. We do see a switch up for Priscilla going into something more offensive, which in this case is Conkelder. And Nelson is gonna pull a switch of his own here. Probably gonna see that maybe the Terrakion come in. But no, we finally see the Clefable! Clefable making his first appearance on this on this stream as Amoongus does get the spore off onto Clefable here. I mean, uh, apart, from, apart from the spot, it was a good switch on Nelson's part. I mean, Clefable could have uh, been able to launch off a full OB to avoid Kangas can be hit by Conqueror's fighting type. However, uh, thanks to the spore, uh, Clefable is not going to be able to do much for the next turn or anything at all. Kangaskhan has the possibility of waking up this turn and protecting though, so uh, Nelson might be able to buy himself some time here if the if the dice rolls in his favor. Yeah, but generally you talk, uh, you wouldn't want to go uh, leave your match up to a dice roll unless you really really have to. The thing is, Kenny is just gonna probably either gonna spore the Kangaskhan slot or just rage powder away any potential attacks onto his Kangaskhan here. Uh, yeah, drain Punch, unless you know that Kankilda is running a really offensive variant with Hammer Arm, Life Orb, Iron Fist, it's not going to be able to take out this Kangaskhan in one hit with a, with, with a move. Kenny actually switches out his Amoongus here, going to bring in his own Kangaskhan, trying to pile on the offensive pressure and make the most out of his trigger teams. Kangaskhan unable to wake up as Kankilda goes with the Ice Punch onto the clip. Pretty thing to switch. Well, but but with the critical, critical hit still hit. does a whole lot of damage to this Kangaskhan. You probably expected maybe uh, Zapdos coming in resisting his uh, fighting attack. However, if I, if Nelson probably thought a uh, uh, fighting attack would come in, I think he would be sending in Gengar instead anyway. So, uh, you know, Kenny is trying to get off some free damage there, but he still gets a good amount of damage onto that Kangaskhan, possibly putting it within Drain Punch range this turn. Even without the crit, you have to imagine that it would be within KO range. As Fable can't wake up to use the follow me here. Gang, okay. uh, Kangaskhan can't, can't wake up either, taking two turns of sleep. Kakala gonna go for the ice punch again. Hmm, interesting choice. Okay. And return gonna come out onto the Clefable. Not wanting it to, uh, to use. Uh, but Clefable has a Rocky Helmet. The Rocky Helmet gonna take almost a third of Kangaskhan's HP there, as Kangaskhan is gonna wake up this following turn. So uh, Nelson has the opportunity to get back into this game. Clefable there, uh, taking two turns of sleep already, so... On the bright side for, for Kenny is that Kenny has, uh, is able to bring Clefable's HP down, uh, down so that Kangaskhan can knock, knock it off the next turn. Oh, but he goes for Protect, he's saving the Clefable. Let's see when Kangaskhan is going to wake up and let's see... This is Protect. So Nelson's Pokemon finally wakes up, going for the Dull Protector, trying to stall out the Trick Room. I believe this is the last turn of Trick Room. So good play by, by Nelson there to, 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 to count the number of turns of Trick Room and reverse the matchup in his favor. That Kangaskhan is still sitting at plus two attack. Uh, so it can fire off very powerful Sucker Punches. Possibly even enough to knock out Kenny's Mega Kangaskhan here after taking Rocky Helmet damage. So yeah, the follow me so finally gonna come out. Now wanted to take maybe a mark punch from Conkeldor. Yep, mark punch does come out, hitting the uh, Clefable, not doing a much damage at all to take so it's very tight. And getting hit by Rocky Helmet in return. And that plus two return, taking no prisoners, gonna drop that Kangaskhan, doesn't even need the second hit. With a plus two attack, a return from Kangaskhan is a very powerful one. With 102 base power, thanks to his max happiness, uh, and, and additional uh, same type attack bonus with plus 2 attack, it's really something to be reckon with, uh, especially considering that it has 2 hits. Kenny here bringing back his Cresselia now. However, with the trick room expired, he's not in a good position to, 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 to steal out this game, even though, you know, because with. Great play by Nelson earlier in the game to get that plus two attack boost with the power of punch. Knowing that if he could stall out the trick room, uh, that Kangaskhan would be a great offensive power. And perhaps a little bit reckless from Kenny there not to take out the Kangaskhan earlier in, in the trick room. Well, I'm, I'm not entirely sure whether this Kangaskhan can, uh, now can take out the Kresela, but plus two attack is really powerful. So we shall see and see whether uh, trick room does come out or not. Return is going to go on the Cresselia though. Is it going to be enough? No, Cresselia hangs on. Cresselia hangs on and uses the Psychic onto 
onto Clefable here, gonna take out the redirector, and now Kangaskhan is open to be sucker punched by by Conkelder. Mock punch. <laughs> But however, the problem here for Kenny is that Chigum is not up and his Cressella is extremely low HP. So it's unlikely that Cressella will be able to set up his Chigum at all unless um, he managed to get uh, his Amoogus in somehow and redirect it from Cressella. Exactly. With, with Nelson having his Gengar in the back, a quick, you know, uh, Sucker Punch is going to drop a lot of damage onto the Kekelda. But no, he actually brings in his, his Heatran here. Interesting decision. I would have thought that you know Gengar would have been a better choice here, seeing that as it has a hundred percent accurate move to take out this Cresselia. I guess it's not really confident. Like yeah, Gengar probably can take out Cocada, uh, but I guess it's not that confident as Cocada may be carrying the assault vest. You know. Conkeller is going to be able to fire off a Mach Punch here though. Suck Sucker Punch even at plus two, probably not going to be enough to want to KO the very physically bulky Conkeller. Uh, but it's going to take a lot of damage. Sucker Punch does come out onto the onto the Conkeller. It's not going to be enough. But he does put him even hit with, so that may be the effect. I don't know. I don't know. He, hey, Kenny's going for it. Is he going to survive the Heat Wave? No, he doesn't. Heat Wave picks up the double KO here. And it's, that's a huge knockout from Nelson. The, even the Assault that's not enough to save Kenny here as, as Kenny has dropped down to his last Pokemon. And it is that Amoongus. Amoongus can't do, really, can't do anything against Heatran. I mean, you can, you can put it to sleep, but you'll still be hit effect, super effectively by Heat Wave, so... Yep. Kenny's just gonna forfeit game one, and Nelson starts his revenge, taking game one of this final set. Uh, we see Chigroom going uh, well for Kenny early on, however, he did not really take out the checks he needed to take out, and with that Kangaskhan plus two on the field, uh, ignoring it was kind of a mistake on Kenny's part. I think Kenny is definitely going to learn from his, his you know, slight misplays in game one. He's one of the most consistent players I've seen in a long time, and you know, I would, I wouldn't, I, I would definitely expect him to bounce back. And, and make the appropriate adjustments to game two. Although Nelson is no slouch of a player himself, and definitely won't let Kenny take the second game e th that easily. Yeah, I mean, as we see in the previous game, uh, Nelson did take advantage of the first time. His will not be his. Um, maybe not ha not having fake out as we uh, we have never seen him using fake out at all. Uh, he takes that uh, time to advantage to actually go for the power up punch to power up his Kangas card, uh, and, and then stall out the chick room so that his Kangas card will still remain powerful after that. And with the sucker punch from the Kangaskhan, we now know that uh, Kenny does Kenny does have that Nelson does not have that fake out on his Kangaskhan, having shown all four of his moves. So Kenny taking this information, if his if his own Kangaskhan has fake out, uh, it might be a good it might be a good time to lead his Kangaskhan and exert the fake out pressure onto Kenny here. I mean, now Kenny would uh, would not be too uh, would not be too scared of his own Cristela being faked out. Uh, before being able to set up Chigroom. So he may actually take advantage of the situation and do something a bit more useful on the first turn. The Gengar though is a huge problem for, for Kenny. He needs to get rid of that fast. Uh, he doesn't really have many ways to deal with it. Uh, Conkelder having that Ice Punch. We haven't seen the knockoff, but you know, uh, doesn't appreciate getting burned either if it doesn't carry that Guts ability. Uh, uh, Sylvia not doing much. Kitchen. Maybe. Uh, that's, that's, not, uh, that's not really do, deal super effective to it, but it is something you can consider to use. Alright, and Kangaskhan for Fable, Nelson, you know, no, it's funny because Nelson was just telling me in this interview in after the semi-final match that Cl that Cl uh, Fable is doing nothing for her this entire tournament, and we saw how pivotal uh, Cl Fable's follow me's were in that previous game. I, I guess it became one of those stories where Cl Fable because what that one Pokemon that helps him just in the last fight in the final of the last game, so it's quite an interesting thing. Kangas got Cresselia coming out from Kenny this time. Kangas got the mirror match right from the get-go. So I would imagine that Cresselia's not too afraid of fake out, uh, and like Kenny's Kangaskhan probably can go straight for uh, uh, for an attack on I, Nelson's uh, Nelson's um, Clefable because taking care of Clefable might be, will be Kenny's top priority right now. Although in this case, uh, with Kangaskhan, with Kenny, with uh, Nelson's Kangaskhan having that power up punch. You have to imagine that Kenny's gonna uh, be a bit afraid, just a bit afraid of him, of letting him set up that, that Kangaskhan again. But there's nothing much Kenny could do, so... 
Yeah. You'll see what happens. Can you scan that Mega Evolving after Nelson's possibly, you know, giving us a hint as to how Kenny's Pokemon are trained compared to Nelson's. It would make a lot of sense for Nelson to have a faster Kangaskhan. As Nelson's Kangaskhan goes for the Protect actually, does Kenny read this and... Oh, but the oh, double, double protect, protect coming out from, Nel from Nelson here, ensuring that he takes no damage, Fake Out coming out. See, even, oh, if, the, even if the Trick Room comes out right now, uh, the Kangaskhan is just going to have his attacks redirected onto the Fable. So, good play by Nelson there to, to you know, get into that position that even if Trickum goes up, you know, he still got this. And Nelson has, can take this advantage of uh, with uh, his capable redirecting attack. He can set up with uh, as many power punch as he wants, and it's pretty much safe for him to do that. As uh, Kenny has no way to really take out that capable uh, one shot or very fast. And right now, as of this moment, he doesn't have any Pokemon with spread moves right now uh, on the field. Yeah, if Kenny maybe has that uh, that that Sylveon or the, you know, Sylveon in the back, it may be a you know a good time to maybe just the thing is if Nelson goes for the power punch, he's not going to be able to sack any of his Pokemon. But at the same time, switching into a Sylveon into a potential double edge or a return or into a return, sorry, is not the best play here. I mean, the previous uh, the previous game. Oh, we see Nelson actually switching out his Cat Fable, not not having that uh, safety direction. Okay. As Kenny is going to pull that switch, out goes Moongus. Cresselia, and in comes Amoongus as Kangaskhan goes straight for the return onto Nelson's Kangaskhan, going to do a whole lot of damage, correctly targeting down the Pokemon here. And even though he gets the power up punch on his opponent's Kangaskhan here, Kenny's, Kenny's Kangaskhan is in a great position now. Um, you know, with, with Clefable off the field and Amoongus on the field to, to quickly spore things, uh, Kenny's gonna put on a lot of pressure with his own Kangaskhan here. Kenny probably didn't plan against uh, switching into uh, Gengar. However, putting uh, Amoongus on the field still helps in either way. Because even with Clefable on the field, uh, a Spore, putting Clefable into sleep uh, would not allow Clefable to redirect anything. And now with Gengar on the field, he can just put Gengar to sleep instead. So it's still kind of a win-win for Kenny. There is a huge mind game going on right now though. Is Nelson going to switch out his Kangaskhan or go for the, the Sucker Punch? Because Kenny wants, definitely wants to make full use of his turn. Oh, but Ken, Nelson does have that Protect, trying to avoid any Sucker Punch damage. As Sucker Punch does go out onto the... Fails. I guess as, also the Gengar. As uh, Amoogus does get off that Spore, putting Gengar to sleep there. So we've seen uh, Nelson's own Kangaskhan using Protect, so next set... Kenny is free to, to attack onto that slot, and with uh, Gengar sleeping, Gengar won't be able, to, will, may not be able to do anything. Once again, though, you know, I think a free double target into that into that Gengar slot. I mean, the Kangaskhan slot is a pretty pretty free play. But is Kenny gonna go for the Sucker Punch, or is he gonna go straight for the return? The safe play here is definitely to go for the Sucker Punch, as Kenny withdraws his own Kangaskhan, gonna bring in Conkelder. Not wanting to play Sucker Punch Mind Games as a double protect and gets it! Those are the exact kind of plays that Nelson needs to get as uh, did Sludge Bomb, Sludge Bomb from, from Amoongus going into the protect there. So now so now we have uh, two protects from uh, Nelson's side. So not well, a cheaper protect may still be possible. It's not likely going to happen. And Gengar may have more chance to wake up right now though. So. Uh, Nelson might actually turn this whole, uh, whole situation around next turn. The Conqueror having Mark Punch is a problem for Kangaskhan. The thing is, if he chooses to Mark Punch the Kangaskhan, then you know Gengar is going to have a free turn here basically to, to burn another turn of sleep or even wake up. So, Conqueror is kind. If Kenny wants to prioritize, take, do as much damage as possible, he kind of has to attack this uh, this Gengar with his Conqueror. However, that means that Kangaskhan is going to be able to get off a free attack. Gengar tries to protect and it just fails, so rolling a slip. And Sucker Punch does come out onto the Conqueror, doing a respectable amount of damage with his Even punishment. that plus two doesn't even take it below half, as Amoongus does get off that Sludge Bomb finally onto the Kangaskhan. Going to drop the Mega. Conqueror is probably going to go for either Ice Punch or a Knockoff. The Ice Punch does come out onto Gengar here. Going to do a whole lot of damage as Trick Room does expire. Well, with Trick Room expiring, Gengar uh, waking, waking up will actually have quite a good lead here. However, however, Gengar is now at a very low HP and uh, Ice Punch can make quick uh, work of it. 
with Amukas uh, being able to redirect uh, his attacks also, also, also one doesn't really put Gengar in a good position. While Hitchin may be able to bypass it by using Heat Wave, super effective against Amukas and dealing some damage with Conkelder, Conkelder. I don't really see it uh, being able to deal enough damage in that one turn. Gengar, it's also worth noting that Gengar has taken two turns of sleep, so it's highly likely that Gengar is going to be able to wake up here and get off an attack. And a Shadow Wall Heat Wave here is going to pick up a KO onto this Conkelder. But re redirection is still a thing on the Mugus side, so let's see what happens on uh, Kenny. Kenny may actually choose to go for the spawn instead. I don't really. Uh, it's an option he has, but I'm not really sure uh, that may be a good idea for him to do. Both players making taking their time. Actually, Nelson has locked in. Kenny once again taking his time to consider his position here. As the heat transition from Nelson has won him a significant amount of momentum back in his favor. I would think that Nelson may be uh, okay with sacking his uh, own Gengar as he is able to switch in his own capable to redirect attacks from the Conkeller uh, on, uh, from the kitchen. So, but Kenny actually does protect with the the. The Amoongas and Heatwave does come out and does connect with the Conkelder, so it will take that, the fighting Pokemon down. Interestingly enough, you know, Kenny did not go for the Mock Punch to get off some good damage on the, onto the Heatran first. Either Mock Punch or uh, Rage Powder. But now Kenny is pretty much free to set up a Trick Room again, so with a full HP Cressella, he's not likely going to get uh, KO'd in one turn. Uh, but either... Uh, Gengar or Heechan, unless maybe a crit happens. In this case, uh, if Gengar has taunt, it would be a fantastic time to use it to taunt the Amoongus. So even if he goes, Kenny goes for the Rage Powder Trick Room play, the Amoongus is basically useless after after helping to set up Trick Room, and Kenny will be forced to switch out and waste his turn of Trick Room. And also, you'll be switching out onto your Mega Gengar which is not really a good thing, as your Mega Gengar will be coming into the battle, getting hit freely by Nelson. So. Uh, yeah, Torn would be a very, would be a very good uh, move here but from Nelson's side. At the same time, you know, he can't just... Oh, but Sludge Bomb coming right out from Gengar onto the Moongus. Not targeting down the Cresselia here as Heat Wave does come out from Heatran. Is it going to be enough to take out this Amoongus? It yeah, is! Amoongus falls, critical hit on the Cresselia as well. But Cresselia is going to set up this Trick Room probably. But oh, no, he actually goes with a Psychic onto, onto uh, Gengar here, gonna down the Ghost-type Pokemon. No, this, this actually puts Kenny in a tough position as he has to deal with uh, Clefable being able to redirect attacks. Uh, his own Kangaskhan can't really do much against uh, Heatran with uh, Clefable taking away all his Fighting-type attacks. And Cressella can't really do much against either Pokemon anyway, so... We are probably gonna and if Kangaskhan does attack into this Clefable, uh, we are reminded that Clefable does have that Rocky Helmet item. So even if Kangaskhan does attack the Clefable, it's gonna take a lot of damage in return, and he and Heatran is gonna be able to, to take the match from there. So Heatran playing a very very safely here, protecting, and probably trying to get out, uh, uh, scout out a fake out from the Kenny's Kangaskhan. But Kenny does pull out the Trick Room. At this point, I think it might be too little too late. Not sure. Yeah, Follow Me is still a priority boost. So even with Trick Room, you're still hitting the wrong Pokemon. And if Kangaskhan gets hit by uh, Rocky Hammer, it is pretty much within uh, hit with KO range. Bar some, you know, in really ridiculous Heat Wave misses. Uh, Ke Nelson is pretty much going to take this finals here as Psychic does come off from the Cresselia onto Clefable here doing so little damage, Clefable is so bulky that special defense drop might be important as Kangaskhan does get that return is it going to be enough to, as Rocky Helmet does so much damage is it going to be enough to KO? No, no it doesn't it all comes down to this can Heat Wave connect with the Heat Wave? it does, it does. Kangaskhan it falls to the heat wave and it's Cresselia against the world and Cresselia does not want to be fighting a full health Heatran here. Yeah, it, this is pretty much Nelson's win here as Cresselia can't, can't, cannot really touch Heatran. It may be able to take out the Clefable but it, does, but it can't really do anything after that. 
Nelson still playing it safe though, gonna redirect any attacks onto his Clefable. Psychic comes out from onto Clefable, gonna take it down, but Heatran here gets a free attack. The single target Heat Wave gonna do a lot of damage, basically equivalent to a critical hit. Does do enough, doesn't do enough though, and Kenny barely hangs on. Oh, Moonlight comes up. Uh, does show the Moonlight is a move that Kenny is known for using. And suddenly, a few Heat Wave misses here or there. And, you know, things might suddenly not not look so sharp for Kenny. Kenny, because Kenny's only choice right now is just to keep on using Moonlight until Heat Wave misses. Correct. Either that or, uh, you know, Heat Wave can either miss or burn to Cresselia. So it's coming down to dice once Kenny's playing for his for a shot at game three. Heat Wave continues to connect three in a row. Is he going to be able to get a burn? No burn as Trick Room does expire. Kenny, uh, Cresselia is pretty much moonlighting for his life right now. Kenny cannot lose this or he will lose this round, but he is at a very big disadvantage. Oh! And the burn finally happens. The burn after four heat waves does get does get the burn on Cresselia and is gonna take it down the next turn. Cresselia can still moonlight, but but with the burn piled onto the additional heat wave damage, uh, you know Cresselia can no longer outpace the the, the heat trans heat wave with recovery. As Kenny does forfeit, respecting his opponent there, and Nelson is gonna take the finals 2-0. A massive reversal from the previous previous premier challenge. Funny how he mentioned that uh, Clefable isn't doing much for him or it's useless for him, but now Fable Fable doing all the work in that final set. <laughs> With a key to how um, how uh, in the world uh, last year we Pachiri is using full, uh, follow me, we have Clefable using follow me and redirecting all the attacks, making sure that Kangaskhan is safe, Heatran is safe. Uh, Gengar is safe from all the attacks and then being able to launch his own attack and all set up with power up punch. Interestingly enough, you know, Clefable Kangaskhan was actually used at the St. Louis Regionals by Aaron Trailer on Reality and, uh, you know, pulled some really amazing plays there with a very similar team. So it's really interesting to see um, the, the American metagame, you know, making its way to Singapore as well. Nelson clutching out, getting his revenge on Kenny and taking the finals and a tasty 40 championship points in his bid for World Championship qualification. Kenny though is still gonna walk away with a second place here, uh, improving on his previous top eight finishes. So congratulations to both of them as well as they both make their bid to qualify for Worlds. Both players still doing a very good job reaching into the uh, finals. Uh, even, even though with Nelson uh, winning 2-0, uh, Kenny did, uh, still did a very good job reaching uh, up here to his uh, second place. One of the most consistent player, even with the second place finish, you know, three first places, two second places, in you know, as his five best premier challenge finishes. So that you know, it's, it's so hard to match that that kind of record, and you have to be so consistent in order to to win so often in such a you know a luck based game like Pokemon. Uh, well, I mean, there is a luck, but you have to uh, mean uh, control your luck in the sense. I mean. It's like example for rock side, uh, rock side features, you have to control maybe your faster so you can avoid that altogether. So while there is a luck factor, uh, players have uh, chances to mitigate that quite a lot. So it is, it is still up to the player skill most of the time. Yes. So as you can see here, we have consistent players getting at the top position. So it does show that Pokemon is not entirely a luck game as some people may be it out to be. You see, you know, that's why Kang Mega Kangaskhan is such a good Pokemon. It's, it's got three moves, you know, it can run four moves that all do not miss. As opposed to, you know, Mega Pokemon like Mawile or Charizard, which have 90% accurate moves. And, you know, when those misses come at untimely turns, that really hurts. And you don't run into that kind of problem when you run Kangaskhan. And, you know, Pokemon like Conkeldur, like Gengar, they all have 100% accurate moves, like Terrakion with the close combat. That being said, Mega Kangaskhan does still need, uh, back, does still need backup to be effective. So as we've seen in the, uh, in the finals, with uh, Clefable actually follow, uh, using Follow Me. And... Yeah, it's been uh, and with uh, being Mega Kangaskhan being quite a popular Pokemon, most players are prepared against it. So you have to find a way to protect it. All right, and I think that is all for today. Uh, we are gonna close the stream. Thanks for joining us. I hope you've enjoyed all the games we've had on stream so far. Do join us for 
I don't think we're having any more premier challenges, but a very exciting Singapore regionals coming up next month. So do tune in. Do tune in for that. Uh, oh, if you, on the 23rd. Yes, on the, on the 23rd of May, we probably will be streaming that live on Twitch. So do tune in for that. This is Shang and Amir is with you.